And going now to developments in Mali, where President Ibrahim Boubacar Keita has resigned. In a televised address aired on state broadcaster ORTM, Mr. Keita also dissolved the government and parliament. The president said he had little choice to avoid any bloodshed. Uh, this comes hours after he and Prime Minister Babu Sisi were taken to a military camp near the capital of Bamako in a suspected coup on Tuesday. Unfolding development in Mali has drawn condemnation from regional powers and France, demanding the immediate release of the president and prime minister. All right, global affairs analyst Victor Ohai joins us now on Skype to talk about this. Uh, Victor, good morning. It's good to have you join me now. Good morning. Good Great. Morning. Now, the development in, in Mali has sent uh, almost everyone back as to military coups again, not again, and all of that. But it, former Nigerian president, good luck, Jonathan, uh, is, the, is the one who is being chosen by ECOWAS to be the mediator in the issues of, of Mali. And we saw how he accepted defeat at the time at the polls. With this development from the president of, uh, of uh, Mali, Bubaka Keita, where he has announced that uh, he's stepping down and dissolving government, do you see the hand of uh, former president Goodluck Jonathan in that? Well, um, yes and, and no, because the truth is, uh, Mama Keita had little choice in the matter. This was a popular uprising. And this is what happens when um, governments go against the will of the people. It's sometimes important to be able to read the uh, political, if you like, uh, barometer at any point in time. Um, since 2012, what you have found is a situation where uh, the government was was riding against, uh, you know, or riding against the tide of uh, popular op opposition, if you like, and. Um, they were trying to manipulate the system, and it got the people very angry. Uh, the military came in 2012, and this is what is happening again. What Good Love Jonathan did, you know, he, on the one hand, he's a pacifist, and he must have gone with that um, philosophy as well. But the problem was bigger than Jonathan, because he had a mandate, and this mandate was from ECOWAS. And within ECOWAS itself, this year, we have four countries that are going to be going that are going to be transitioning uh, and two of which are trying to ask for third term and a lot of them are afraid that if what happened in Mali is allowed if what's happening in Mali is allowed it might stir up opposition in their countries as well so on the one hand while they want peace in ECOWAS they were also manipulating how the kind of peace that they wanted in ECOWAS and something had to give and what gave is exactly what you have seen a military coup is not an alternative, is not the way to go. But sometimes when things go beyond, I mean, when, when, when there's nothing else that can happen, uh, you know, then this is, what, this is what happens. It is unfortunate, it is unwelcome, but um, unfortunately it was something that had to come, uh, you know, at a time like this. All right, but if you would look at the development, what, what impact will this make on the fragile peace that has been enjoyed in Mali? Well, um, I think that, you know, um, what will happen at the end of the day is uh, the people have spoken. I can assure you that the international community, in spite of the fact that they do not want the regime change, uh, already recognize what is happening, that the president is just headstrong. You are manipulating uh, parliament, you are manipulating election results. Uh, I think a stalemate will come. Right now, the, the president has no choice. He knows that he's unpopular. He has to leave. What happened be, just immediately before, particularly the agreement was reached with the imam, which came a bit too late, was that, okay, now they were soft peddling, they, they could now uh, share government to the opposition and all that. But if the opposition finds out now that he has bigger advantage, then they may give him no choice at all. They may insist that he goes. They may insist on fresh elections. And um, uh, that's what I see playing out. I don't see the military staying there for much longer. But I think that it's time for them to go, for the government to leave.
Excellent. All right, so let's discuss this. Um, before and now, before this uh, uh, coup attempt in Mali, um, you see that discussions had been ongoing. One question people would ask is, why is President Bubaka Keita unpopular in Mali? Well, um, the reason is simple. Uh, when, you, when you try to manipulate the electoral process in your favor, against popular will that is the result of it and uh, it's the same problem with a lot of um, dictators or potential dictators in niger in africa rather <laughs> where a lot of them want to manipulate the process even when they become unpopular they still want to extend they want to still want to do uh, regime extension and and so that's that, that's the beginning of his problem and that's that's where he's having a problem um i mean you know you you you, you elections are held and then you want to begin to change the process it's simple that's what it is moving against in one simple sentence working against popular opinion all right as it is right now uh, the, the president has uh, addressed uh, the country and uh, resigned and uh, you know dissolved the, the parliament and all of that would you see this as the right way to go or just an afterthought of what he should have done long before now? It's both. It's an afterthought, and it's the only way to go. Not that he had any choice in the matter. Uh, matter of fact, he's lucky to be alive because the coup could have been bloody if he had resisted and if, if they had, you know, it could have gone any other way. So he's a very lucky man to be alive. It's a military coup after all. So I think um, he didn't have a choice in the matter. That's the only way to go about it. Dissolving parliament and... and, and Really negotiating. This is something he ought to have done a very long time ago. Uh, but he, 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 I mean, in the last few days, he seemed to have said softening when he saw the way everything was going, especially with the uprising at uh, uh, the military base in Kati. But, you know, um, it's one move too late already. He's already on his way out. There's no, there's no, there's no two way about it anymore. Uh, it's the military that have actually dissolved parliament right now. It's not even him. He doesn't have a choice in the matter anymore. So I was saying, like a deja vu from what happened in 2012, and now we're seeing another, uh, some look alike as to what happened in 2012 and now. How do you think this destabilizes the economy of the, st of the country and even you know, pro project, project the continent now to the international world? Well, um, what happened in 2025, uh, 2012, you can see that you can draw a parallel to what is happening in Nigeria, perhaps Nigeria's approach as well. Um, they are having a problem from the northern flank, just like, like Nigeria with uh, jihadis. So the upright, there's a problem with the economy, there's a problem with security, and you know, so all of that has turned the country into a state of anarchy. And this is the reason the citizens are, you know, <clears throat> very impatient with them because the government has not really handled the matter as well as they should i i see what has happened now as you know you know you can you can draw a parallel you can draw a similarity with what happened in 2012 but going forward whoever is coming in right now is going to seriously have to address uh, the issues in the north security issues in particular because that is what has affected the economy and for the rest of africa uh, I think that, you know, ECOWAS, you know, some selfish ECOWAS leaders, particularly those who are, who are you know, uh, transiting uh, this year, uh, they, didn't handle the trans they didn't handle the matter in Mali very well. I mean, if you're going for a negotiation, you should listen to both sides. Uh, while you are interested in making sure that there is not an unlawful regime change, you must also listen to the people and find out what is happening and ensure that even the government in power is coming with clean hands, you know, and not for selfish reasons, you know, you want to manipulate things because you don't want a similar, you don't want to set a precedent that might affect you in your own country. So I think that what has happened right now is that um, the international community may just have to see with the Malian people and, and, you know, work along with them to make sure that they can get a popular government, democratically elected government in place. There's no room for the military, obviously. They can't mm. be there for long. Right. It's either the military persons transit into civilians and contest elections after a transition period, or just move out for a democratically elected government to be put in place. But they certainly, 
is no room for um, you know a military regime in Mali or anywhere in Africa again. All right. The world will not the world will not accept it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Global Affairs Analyst Victor Hai, thank you so much for your thoughts on TVC Breakfast. Thank you for having me.